Mm-hmm. Howdy. As usual, a little bit tired. Um, ran a fever for part of today. That was fun. Um, got some rest. Still not feeling great, but uh, but hopefully I'm coming out of the woods. Uh, so that's good. I've got this Biologus Putrefier. And he's got some amount of detail in him, as you can see. Uh, the white spots here looking pretty good. Um, some of these little divots are going to get some Nurgle's rot. Uh, but I've got a lot of metallics to do. Uh, that's most of it. I've got also this cape. Um, and then a bunch of little details on the bottles. These will get a wash of some sort uh, to sort of make them stand out. But they've all got little, you know, tan strings. And there's brown there. And there's some different colors. Uh, so these will get a wash. And... Um, and yeah, why don't we just get down to business, have a quick sip of tea. I changed the lens on my camera. Had a lot of struggles last night with keeping things in focus. I don't want to turn autofocus on. I think part of it was going, I was doing a little back and forth between tiny model and huge model. Um, yeah, Dane, well, good ideas need to get made. Uh, I did order some, I think they're from Age of Sigmar. There's some piles of Nurglings. Um, and I'll probably clip those all out just so I have a pile of Nurglings, not glued together ones. Um, so at some point I'll start basing and I'll, I'll definitely put a Nurgling on top of on top of my Night Tyrant, uh, sitting on top having a good time. Maybe one on one of the ends of the guns. I can put one on the harpoon. That would be awesome. Little guy sitting right in, waiting to ride on the end of the harpoon that would be totally in lore so i think what i'm going to start with is lead belcher and i'll do the the tubes on here on the helmet uh, i'll obviously get the sword that'll get all typhused up afterwards uh it's got some green glob coming off of it and then i'll move on to warp lock bronze for the trim on the pauldrons the thing that goes over the helmet maybe the centerpiece of it a little bit on the Jump pack, well, not really jump pack because he's got wings. Um, the backpack. Uh, add some Nurgle's Rot around, give it a wash. We might be pretty close. Um, I'll probably have to do a little bit of additional detail work um, here and there. But we're at the very least pretty close, which is amazing to me because it used to take me a lot more time. I think the stream last night was an hour and a half. Um, and to do a model like this, it used to take me like eight to 10 hours. Uh, when I got started, it was really slow. Um, so that's good. And this whole channel is about making progress. Um, after this guy, I got to start plowing through a bunch of uh, Plague Marines. Um, so I'll do those in tiny batches, tiny. Four was a lot for me last time as a batch. Uh, it might be a little easier for me now um, to do four at a time. Fours and threes, that'll get me to sevens. Uh, so I'll probably do that. Uh, and it'll be a second squad. So I'm going to probably pick some amount of variant color scheme so that on the board, on the table, they look a little different. I can better keep them in mind. Um, so I guess, I guess we'll just get down to business. Let's see here. I said I was going to start with some lead belcher. I do like this stuff. This pot feels amazingly light. How was your day, Dane? All right, grab some of this stuff. Put it on my wet palette. Yeah, Terminator Lord. I am excited to see a bunch of that. There's actually a tentacle around that thing, so I will have to hit that with something. That'll probably get Bugman's Glow when I get to it. I don't worry too much about being a little heavy-handed with metallics on the blades like this, because they're going to get so weighed down with Typhus Corrosion that, yes, I still want the details to be in there, but... These are not clean weapons, and so I, I don't have the same high standard. You know, if this is some power sword on a proper Space Marine, 
make sure my lights are on, then I might be super careful, but it ain't. Get that little dab there. Yeah, I got most of that bleed. Alrighty. And then these tubes I like to do with lead belcher and then grind them down a lot with uh, just a black wash. I use Viejo. Get all underneath here. I'll actually get the nose of this thing too and these little connector pieces. And when that washes down, it won't pop as much. Yeah, absolutely post a pick. I'm excited for that. It's uh, very relevant to my interests. I do have some non-terminator versions of chaos, Nurgle Chaos Lords to get done. Uh, and that'll probably be the very next thing I do after this. And that'll get me my first personal lesson in kit bashing, which I've never done, but I'm excited for. Uh, I really want to, I'm also going to get these bands on here. Um, I've always done things pretty close to by the books, but I always have these sort of interesting ideas as I'm putting a model together. Definitely with the Tyrant, absolutely with that uh, malignifier spinning around behind me that I finished recently of like, wow, these parts would look good on other models. And I've started, and I don't know why I didn't do this from Go, but I've started looking at a lot of anything from either Horus Heresy or Age of Sigmar as like places to to find new parts, new fiddly bits, that I can use to add and and customize what I've already built. Now it's funny, um, as I add this lead belcher to this gun, it does actually make the uh, Tesseract Glow pop a little bit more, which is cool. We definitely want that. I'm going to turn this at weird angles so I can see underneath that all the stuff I need to do. And as much as I was laying it out reasonably thick on the weapon, these pipes you want to be pretty gentle with, with your metallics, because they'll have all that ribbing like it's a compressible tube. So I go pretty light on those so that I don't lose that texture. And get his little breather mask thing going. All right, I will. As soon as I put this brush down, I'm definitely going to check that out because I'm very excited for that. I'm going to get the top of his helmet and around, oh, shaky hands McGee, fever-induced painting. There we go. Just getting around those little eye bits. I think I just lost the... Christmas tree ornament, and then through the back here, I'll just continue, continue, but yeah, making, making good progress on all these models, I, as long as I keep streaming, they just keep getting cranked out, keep making steady progress, it's not about getting everything done all at once, it's about being able to mark your progress and feeling good about it. All right, I wash this guy off and take a look. See, I got to figure out how to get more multiple screens going at the same time, which I can absolutely do. Uh, that's obviously quite a bit for me to manage myself, but it would be really nice if I could actually just cut away to this and show it. Oh, that guy. Ha! That does look dope. That guy looks cool. Yeah, that that gun on there looks really, really nice. It's interesting because that model like comes with this huge off-handed spewer. Um, but the pose is really solid with that gun. Um, that is a that's a combi bolter, right? Let's see if I'm getting my my weapon names right. I think you mentioned that last night. That looks really cool. 
You know what? I wonder if I could do this. Boop. This is the non-professional way to do what I'm trying to do. Does that show up? Yeah! Look at that. Putting a camera on another screen. I can do the Inception screen. Yeah. Um, that looks really awesome. I'm excited to see your progress on that. That is wicked cool. Scooch all my stuff around, sent brushes flying, keeping things as professional as possible on this stream. Go back and pop this thing. That looks really cool. Um, I'll look at it again. There's a lot of really interesting details. Yeah, that guy's going to be fun. That guy's going to be a parte. All right, so now I'm going to squeak over here and start doing some warp block bronze work. And so all the edging on the pauldrons, the thing over the helmet, and any other little bits that make sense. This needs a better shake. Uh, yep. Oh, sweet. It is a combi bolter. Or storm, storm bolter. Oh, you know what? I missed the spot. Oop. I am back on lead belcher. There's a little bit of chain that comes through. But I gotta hit that. Actually, I probably don't even need to open the pot again. Still got some on my wet palette. I'll just do a little dab here. So right underneath there, there's some chain. We'll hit that right now. Once again, with things like chain, I lay it on pretty light so that you don't lose the texture. You want the wash that you're going to put on in there uh, to have some amount of depth to cling to. And you water the paint down a little bit with metallics and they'll just kind of soak in a little bit more rather than, than clump up. In my experience, my vast, vast tiny little months of experience with my roughly, I don't know, I'm at like 1,200 points, 1,300 points of army. Making progress though. All right, one last spin rooney Yeah, I could probably hit a couple other things with lead belcher and there's a little tubing in there. I'll hit that real quick. Always finding more stuff. That other stuff on the back will get, uh, which we call it war block bronze. All right, now I'll clean this and move over to war block. So many weapons. I need to. One of the things I figured out is that I think for my my first squad, and probably for all my squads, I think I I want a melt -a gun. I gotta figure out what that looks like. I think I'm guessing those are just flamethrowers, but. I gotta do some research. Um, Cause I got a bunch of weapons on my Plague Marine sprues. And I definitely know what a plasma gun looks like. I know what a bolter looks like. I know what a spewer. I think a belcher is like a circular grenade launcher thing. Melt again, I gotta figure out like, like that's an Infernus Marine. Is that actually a melt gun or is there a different word for those flamethrower looking things? You're pretty rad. I like you a lot. You were a lot of fun to paint. Your brother didn't have as good a time working for Typhus, but that guy's a hoot. All right, so I've got some warp lock bronze on my palette here. Get another little dab of water. Warp, warp lock bronze, pretty thick stuff. Clean this brush up a little bit. Thick, thick stuff. So just getting the edging, the flamer gun, melted and flamer are different things. This, <laughs> this is the best part of being here, having people be able to teach me stuff in real time. So, so check me on this. Flamers are for taking out infantry. Meltas are like taking out like vehicles and stuff, right? Am I getting that part right at least? Like Melta sounds like a high powered laser lance thing. Let's 
So much to learn. So much to learn. That's in reasonably decent focus. I wonder if I can up the... I don't want to do it midstream. But there's a massive delay on what you guys type and when I see it. And it's not just me being a knucklehead. There are settings for that mumbo jumbo. There we go. Not that this is all that high paced situation. There we go. Man, that is I'm still not saying it's fantastic, but I'm so much better at this than I used to be. And, and it's just a matter of getting more patient, taking my time and kind of having some idea of knowing where things are going eventually. I get a little bit less jammed up and frantic. Very hot beam of heat. Closer to plasma than flamers. That makes sense. Okay, so it doesn't have that perforated thing on the end. Like, how do you know... Hmm. Can you guys describe it? I might pull out a sprue in a minute and, and just start pointing at stuff and get my... It'd be like being in an elementary school and pointing at letters on the board, uh, which I think is fun. There we go. That's getting a little thin. Just getting this edging to pop. Get a little bit more glop on there. The other thing that I've learned is that like you can keep I used to put a ton of paint on the on the brush. Now I just get enough on there and I'm just happy to go back and grab more. And it's that patience thing. Got a weird tube underneath the barrel. Alright, after I get this pauldron done, and I think I'm actually gonna do the fly on here in bronze as well. After I get this pauldron done, we'll we'll play a very latency laden game of hide and seek with a with a sprue and you guys can help me learn. I definitely don't want to screw that up. I don't want to have like the wrong weapon on there. Not that it's like a terrible thing, but Plague Marines get a lot of weapon choices and like I would like my opponent to see what something is wielding and have that make sense to them. And of course me as well. Just make sure my house isn't burning down. Nope. House is not burning down. At least as far as anyone in my house can tell. My phone is popping off. All right, let's get this bug. I love the stylized flies on all the Death Guard stuff. I love everything about the Death Guard. But the flies are just a really cool touch. Flies are creepy. Nobody really likes them, except for frogs. Frogs like flies. Just keep on tapping. Get right down the middle. That's pretty close, but not close enough, ombre. Touch, touch, touch. Gentle, gentle touch. Talk myself into being careful. That's not too shabby. Other pauldron's good. I'm gonna hit a little bit of that elevated spot of these ye old triple circle. He's gonna get a nice dollop of Nurgle's rot in each one of them. But I feel like the edge of this will still show a little bit if I give it just a tiny bit Tiny bit of love around it. And if it doesn't show up, that's fine. Good practice on super tiny spots. I am so much more gentle than I used to be. Still a little heavy handed, but good progress made in that regard. I'll just get one stroke across this thing. Yeah, it looks reasonably filled in enough. All right, are there any other spots? I did say this cross piece on the helm mask thing, so we'll get that all 
stretch my arm out a little bit. Is that done? Yeah, when I get done with the bronze, we'll play Sprue Hide and Seek. These little handles are pretty cool. I've done fine with uh, that white sticky stuff sticking down a model onto a shot glass, of all things. That's been pretty good. But I would say, if you're getting started doing this, and you have big hands, this little handle thing is pretty good. They were actually out of stock on Amazon for like the longest time, like this size wasn't. I accidentally ordered the big mega one, uh, which wasn't very helpful. Um, but then these finally got back in stock. And I figured I'd give them a spin. Man, I am shaking quite a bit. Maybe it's that fever. I don't know. Definitely not well. I'm not trying to be dramatic here, but I'm also not able to hold this thing all that straight. My right hand's fine. My left hand's just, just banging. But you can always go slow. That's what I remind myself. You can always just go slow. Is that reasonably painted? Kind of, sort of. Needs a little bit of love over here. All right, and I think the last spot I was citing that detail work on ye old backpack. Anytime I see one of these gas sensor things, I do all of the it and all the parts around it in in that bronze. It looks really good, especially after it takes a wash. All those little wiffle ball holes really nicely with a black wash in them it doesn't because the the bronze is already pretty dark we get these little bloop burp i should get his collar that helmet or armor collar thing i'm not sure what it's called but that deserves some bronze too oh yeah i sort of splooshed it a bit but that that's going to get that sin will be washed away with uh the wash i put on here it's also kind of a little treat in that with working with such a dark green and see if I can thread the needle in here. Er, such a dark green and warp lock bronze is that as soon as you're in that Agrax black wash territory, a lot of your sins go away in terms of the transition between the bronze and the green. Like both both black wash and agrax are like a perfect transition wash. One more deep breath. I've got to get this innards of this pauldron. Or that X thing of Medusal. All right, that's about as much angle as anyone's ever going to see in this thing. Thread this in there. I do have to get that outer edge though. That matters. It does matter. And I'll just scoot you in there and give you a little love. There you go. All right. So that'll give me a few seconds to let this guy dry up a little bit before I move on to scary colors like my fist in red. The cloak part. I'll set this guy back a little bit. And we'll play a game. Do, 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 do. Sprue hide and seek. This one have a bunch of weapons on it. Uh, has it so that almost perfectly fits in the shot. Huh. Nice. Remember that height and lens. Uh, bolter, heavy bolter. That looks like a flamer. Weird tube under the barrel. That's a belcher. Heavy-ish bolter. Might not be on this sprue. Might not. It's so funny because with the delay here, I'm going to be like talking about stuff and then like in a minute you guys will be like, go back to that other thing. I don't remember what it was. 
Belcher, Bolter, Belcher. Are these in halves? They're not in halves. I need to find a Melta. That thing? No, that, that looks like a spewer. That's got like a spewer nose plasma. First one that I called a flamer. First one that I, ah, this one. Okay, so that guy right there is a Melta. Maybe I should move it so that you can see what I'm pointing at on the camera. No. Ugh. Can you read the numbers? <laughs> this, is, this is so delayed. It's hilarious. So this one is 146. <laughs> phone tag. I'll post a picture on the Discord. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> Man, I am glad Discord got invented. Honestly, I don't expect there's ever going to be 8 million people on it, but like already in this one little stream, it's just like, yeah, I'll show you a picture. Twice now. Got to see uh, Dane's Terminator Lord getting my lesson on weapons. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Being guided through this wonderful process of learning and enjoyment. Set you aside a little bit. I'm going to grab a different brush for Admiral Nurgle's rod. Done. There it is. All right. That makes sense. All right. That's the tube you mean. Sweet. That's very helpful because, man, that stuff is confusing. <laughs> very confusing. And they've even, you know, trimmed back a ton of what Plague Marines actually wield at this point. Like, they've basically reduce the weapons down to three and like one of them is just like if you don't have a visible weapon he's got knives um but there we go there's the good stuff nurgle's rot you are delicious i don't water nurgle's rot down at all because it is absolutely technical i put a big old dollop of green cheese in that Sloppy hole in his chest. Big old dollop doll of green cheese. Don't want to get too excited and put it everywhere. But yeah, you're going to get some of that delicious Nurgle's rot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That stuff is dope. Oh, it's awesome. It's just like dripping out of this thing. Ugh. Ugh. Nurgle's rot. Why did it take me so long to find you? I think that may be one of the things I do to get my uh, my pox walkers popping a little bit more because they're so early in my training and equipment. Um, as I much just might do a pass of just a crazy amount of Nurgle's rod. This stuff is just great, so slimy, and just depositing it in a lot of these little divots and holes. This feels good. It's a gross color, and the sheen they get on it is just. Dynamite. Oop, oh, fill each one of these holes in with some delicious snot. I managed to keep the edges shiny. Look at that. Yeah, not really brushing, just tapping and depositing it in there. Even a deposit at the bank. Everywhere I see, on this model at least, I'm not going to do this globally. 
Other things I've done is just dump some washes sometimes in those little holes. But this guy, just going to get a dollop in each one of those rotting bits. Like this one right there. Boop. It's really cool. I'm guessing it's like this viscous kind of technical paint is the same as uh, the red one. Blood for the Blood God. Like that stuff, just like a beautiful sheen to it. I'm guessing this is chemically the basis. The base is very similar. Um, a ton more dots to do. Just a couple. That one will be gentle with. Uh, it's got back of the thigh one. Oh, weird acne back there. Just keep spinning them around. I've got a couple little divots in here. Give them some love. A little bit more on the end of here. The next step after this that I do, speaking of red, will be the uh, the piece of fabric. A little clothy thing. All right, you're looking decently rotten. I like. And I can always go back with more of that. <coughs> excuse me. Don't oh, excuse me. I'm getting sick. You're not stuck in the actual room with me. I'll be fine. You guys can live with it. Um, I am getting angry, which is fun. I'll be spewing out. I'll have. All, I'll just refill this pot with all my nasal, nasal rot. Save on paint. Thankfully, I haven't started really flowing yet. Eh, there's a divot there. We'll fill you in with some delicious rot. It takes so little. It does so much. Okay. It's got a decent amount of rotty spots. Set this side, leave it here. Makes a tiny little bit of glue. So I'm, I'm assuming from stuff that I've read and stuff that I've tried a little bit, and because my wife does a lot of interesting pour paint stuff, that I'd want to use like Elmer's glue. Right? That sounds like the right road to go to get some, some gloopy stuff. Um, I've also thought about adding some glue to this stuff to get little pools in bases. So like building up the basing material so it's got a little, little spot and then like dropping a little skull in there and then pouring some of that mixed with some, some Elmer's glue in um, so you get a puddle. That'll be something I experiment with. That's something I should have done on Thick Boy over there. On the Tyrant, it's got plenty of space in there, could have had a nice divot. But anyway, why don't we go to the Mephiston Red scary part. You use super glue for it. That seems interesting, because super glue is like relatively thin, but it dries very fast. I presume you're using something like a toothpick or something to put it on and not a brush, or you just make your piece with the brush, it's going to be dead. Um, but if you're talking about like, like goopy viscera, like, a, oh man, I saw an awesome picture of a typhus, um, and he had blood that was literally like attached from the side, and it was like dripping down, and it was just strings, that was, that was probably super glue. Weird. But I'm guessing you have to really take advantage of the fact of like, how weird drying it is and like is it like working with taffy toothpick for sure yeah um but it sounds like if you're really patient about it and you treated it like taffy and just kept stretching it and stretching it or not even stretching but like you you paint a bit into the air it's like 3d printing pen um that's how i would guess it would work interesting what's nice is i have a ton of bases i have to do so I can start taking some of that. Yeah, then you can string it from part to part. That is so nasty. That is so nasty. I love it. That's the other great thing about this hobby. Just the amount of ingenuity that goes into it. And the amount of just like conversations you have with other people. And it's like, oh, mind blown. Get to go try the stuff yourself. Like, this is the hobby that just keeps on giving. 
So right now I'm just being super careful because it's my fist in red and it will not be nice if I get it all over the place. Um, the Fist and Red has a great texture to it though, like it paints real easy. I'm not even watering it down much at this point. Like the brush is wet and I've got a little dab over here of slightly wet down stuff, but it goes on like really smooth. That's another part they don't really tell you much about is that like the paints just behave differently because they have to be made with different stuff. It's a really cool part of paint is the science behind it not even just getting into technical stuff technically paint all right I did actually bang up a couple spots in there so I gotta be a little careful this is gonna get a wash so I don't have to be perfect and I am gonna get in there with just a wet brush and thin out the couple spots that I horked a little bit and then boop triage toothpick there we go triage toothpick all right so that red stuff oh it isn't quite done I didn't actually finish it the light will show you where you have not finished there we go so the the red sort of cloaky things are also a point of continuity on some of these guys you know, drink. Typhus has got it. This one's darked down quite a bit. Um, this guy's got one. You know, the chains and the cloak. Just a little opportunity for extra color. Um, so I'm doing that consistently. Oh, tentacle. Basically, I'm trying to knock out all the stuff that I want to get done before I do any washes. And I'll do my washes and then I'll come back. I'll return and any detail that needs to go over the top I'll do um, and I'll do things like typhus corrosion after that Bugman's glow the universal silly putty color of choice Um, that tube underneath there needs to be silverized. And this will probably get whatever the same wash as the red cloak below. And because the base will be different, it'll, it'll look different. There's a little tentacular thing here. Just get in there. Tiniest little bit of tentacle. And then there's one wrapped around, that's right, wrapped around the blade. And that one's bigger. this I do need to thin out this stuff is like silly putty it's like those old school stretch toys you used to be able to get back in the day it's the fact that he's just holding his knife with a tentacle sheathed and ready this guy's got to go to town that knife is coming out fast All right, well, I still got some detail to do in there, but I will take this guy for a quick spin. Boop. Just get the edge of that. Well, just a little more of the edge. And I screwed it up. So close uh, but it's fine just grab a little bit of water on the end of this and all sins are forgotten then I'll go back and try again and get it right I used to freak out about that stuff a lot and I wasn't doing it live in front of a few folks I was just huddled in my other desk the tape running I would screw it up and I'd be like, oh, again. There are plenty of models that went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Like, here's a piece of metal. Here's my fist in red. Here's a piece of metal. Here's my fist. Just keep trying to get the line to, to be remotely straight. 
and I made my peace with it. So uh, we are swiftly moving into Washapalooza. Love washes. Born for this. Um, there's not too much lead belcher around, so just one drop on that wet palette will do. Yeah, I would love to up my my special effects game, so to speak. Things like pooling effects. Um, I love doing rust effects, but I'm not actually good at them. They just they're like they're they're good on their own, um, and I like them a lot. But I would actually like to like dig in and learn a lot about how to do them. Awesome. Um, like I like how mine look, but I just know that there's vastly more to learn about that that whole process of weathering you know the fact that like i basically i buy a lot of the right tools and I, like, i'm like a little baby using them but i have started watching videos of course i can never at this hour remember who anyone is so i can cite them but i should put it in the comments i've, I've started watching people that just do like world war ii boats and those people, like, them folks know how to weather things. Like, that step of the process. And not even, like, not even crazy things like, you know, battle cruisers and, you know, aircraft carriers. We're talking, like, intimate ships. We could see... I mean, the big ships are obviously, like, a, an amazing ton of work. But the, they're at such a big scale. Um... That it's not as intimate as, as something like this. Seeing the weathering that those people do. Like tanks. Weathering on tanks is just like crazy. Jeeps and stuff. I love it. And they just have so much to teach. And a lot of them do expand out into diorama a lot. And so you'll get a boat ship. And it's on like this poured but I don't know if it's acrylic or resin or whatever like it's on the water and then there's all these effects on that to make it so you can see the wake um, some of these some of these dioramas it's like a ship that has just gotten hit by a torpedo it's like crazy a big old deformation in there explosion coming out with like airbrushed cotton and stuff things that light up um, there's a lot of a lot of inspiration there um, to be had and just a lot of technique because they, they do it at such a scale that like I'm like hmm I could I could stand to learn from that. All right. So you can already see that this piping, this tubing stuff from the like breather mask, which is ironic because this guy can't really be killed by anything he breathes. That's nice and dark down. Uh, the blade I don't need to worry about. Blade's fine. Um, I think we are getting on to washing the rest of this guy excessively. Um, and I'm not going to streak and grime this dude. I'm just going to go hefty on the, the Agrax glory train. If I can find it. That's contrast skeleton horde. There we go, Agrax. A little shake. We take a brief intermission to sip some tea. My zero to forty k mug is in the mail. My sample mug. Pretty soon I'm going to do ad placement in my my tiny little thing. Now I'm going to replace replace that water cup with proper mug. Aprons are out of stock. Because uh, they're made to order. I, no one's ordered any of my aprons. That's fine. Um, but I'm going to force my children, my little kids, to wear onesies that I've designed. I had to explain to my wife that I'm more than just an amazing husband and father. I'm a global lifestyle brand now. I get a kick out of that. I'm just like, I'm, all I'm doing is turning on all the switches on YouTube of all the stuff that it does. So, like, whatever. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. I find it hilarious, and I'm a deeply curious person, so as soon as like I got monetized, I was just like, flip, flip, switch, flip, switch. Like, There's nothing to subscribe to on this channel, but I'm just going to put subscription levels on it and add some emojis to it and just turn everything on. Um, 
because I think it's hilarious. I didn't ever think I was going to get monetized. Now that I have, I'm just going gonna, gonna to see what this stuff does and get customer service involved. Just a couple more seconds to dry up before I drench it. I've got to decide. I think I'm going to go with a lighter wash on all the stuff back here. I think I'll probably dial it back to Seraphim Sepia. Um, and I'll probably dilute that a little bit. Uh, there's a ton of crevices. <laughs> You'll be zero to 40 million in no time at all. Uh, I'm, my wife's so funny. She like, I just, I, I talk this up like insanely and she just puts up with it. She knows I'm joking, but like, um, <laughs> my wife's such a trooper. Honey, I gotta go strain. Um, it's my, my side hustle. But no, I, I've done pretty well. I mean, at this point, let me check the numbers. I think we're doing, we're doing good. That Henry Cavill video's popping off. How many humans care about this thing? Yeah, we're at like 3,679. Like, I never imagined I'd have that many people. It's dope. So I'm going to have fun with it, and I'm going to turn on all the switches. There'll be weird emojis that can be done in chat for like $2 a month. I don't know. I don't know why anyone would invest in this, but I'm not going to stop them. All right, let's, let's get this wash on. I will say this. By streaming, my output of models has like, I'm so committed to it now. It's so good. I've gotten so much done. I've cranked out so many points in like a few weeks. And when I get stumped on something like a melted gun, oops, here's my brush. That help right there. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. All right. Agrax, Agrax, Agrax. Oh yeah, that's a heavy amount. That's good stuff. Um, now the thing is, I'm not going all the way. I'm not going onto that white stuff. So I gotta be a little bit careful. Um, but my first salvo on here is nice and thick. And then I, I just try to grab a bunch on the brush and then later use what's on the brush and just move it around gently. Oh, yeah. you Now you're getting ugly. Make sure I'm not wiping any paint off. Now it's dry enough. Good. I am sad that my current mugs don't ship to Brazil, so I gotta fix that. Can't call myself a global lifestyle brand if I don't ship globally. Even as a joke, I got standards. Get inside here. Coming off, it's not. All right, that glop is done. Side there, oh buddy, you're starting. You're starting to look sharp. You're ready to go to the prom. So that Agrax gets on there. You are hyped. I like you, buddy. Yeah. Grim dark future. There is plenty of Agrax Earthshade. I can tell you that much. Go right over that slop. Yeah. Then all the texture starts popping out. And the other thing is obviously like for the undercarriage of these guys, a lot of times just being able to darken up underneath where you didn't necessarily get with a darker primer is, is a good time. Good opportunity to just heal up that model underneath here, all this stuff. Just oop, I gotta get under that with some brr, that desperately needs some warp lock bronze, but I'll get that part later. Getting all into the fiddly bits. All right, so you know what? I'm gonna just get right there. We've definitely darkened up. That spot's gonna need some Tesseract Glow, that's fine. 
I'll get that in a sort of highlight phase at the end of this. I'm going to switch over to Seraphim Sepia and I'm going to get all of this oh, accoutrement. All the extra bits, get those done. <clears throat> oh, there it comes, the itchy throat. One of the things that I love about now that I'm like in it to win it on this amazing hobby of painting, every once in a while my kid has a project and he's like, oh, we need like popsicle sticks and these kinds of tabs and this thing. I'm like, how's it going in my office? I got all that stuff. I got all, I got like five kinds of glue. Like we are ready to craft it at a moment's notice. Uh, and it feels good. It feels good to just be like, oh, I got this workshop. All my weird stuff. I spent way too much money on it. Not, it's not too much. I spend a lot of money on this stuff, but I'm not a kid. I have a job. So I do what I want. <laughs> all right. And this is all gonna, I might try to avoid, the, I'm not gonna avoid the bottles. Try to avoid the, yeah, I can't avoid the bottles. You gotta hit all this. As soon as I started doing it, I was like, no, it's actually making it, it's actually bringing out a ton of detail that's necessary. And if I need to go back and brighten things up, I can do that. But Seraphim Sepia is like an extremely important tool. It's a wash. It still doesn't have any crazy color to it, but it's not too dark. You don't lose everything in it. I like losing a lot of things in it, but in the wash, but it gives you that just little notch of like bringing out the texture of the string and things like that. It's great for skulls, as I've said. Obviously, I'm using it all down there um, on the lighter parts of the armor. But I, I, I think it's like a necessary thing for the toolbox. It's uh, I like Agrax. I like Black Wash. But it's not perfect for everything. Sometimes a little bit lighter hand is a good thing. We will get a little boop in there though. Hit that elbow a little bit. Uh, just give it a little dab more. Just a little bit. Um, I did miss that with black wash. And I did miss this front stuff with, with sepia. And so there'll be... There will be some, let's give us some sepia while I'm in there, a little extra spots. There will be some going back over this a little bit, but right now, I think the last major thing, the last two things, getting those chains, because those I can't suffer those chains being bright. That does not work. And then getting that cloak. So if you, you'll notice as, I've, as the seraphim sepia is like, chilling out. The colors are still popping through pretty decently. Um, it hasn't like overly grim dark those. And then I'll just use the exact same colors that I used underneath when I first painted them. Um, I may be able to get to it on camera, maybe not, but I'll just use the exact same color now because the base of what's on there has been brought down with with, uh, with the Seraphim Sepia. I'll use the same color, just put some highlights in there. I'm done, done. I don't have to mix paint. Um, not that that's dreadful, but I need a red wash, which I think I had one. Berserker Bloodshade. My old friend. And we'll berserk out that bit of fabric. And uh, while I'm sitting here, I've already got black just sitting on my wet palette. So now those chains underneath that mail is done. I'm actually going to scooch in there and a little spot that's hard to get to. It was hard to paint. I'm going to a little bit of black wash, thread the needle. It's nice and hidden. Good. All right. So bloodshade, a sip of tea. Do like Berserker Bloodshade. Blah, 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 blah. Is 
that won't need much. Um, but that tentacle, the tentacle wrapped around that weapon, that's going to get some of that too. And I'm just taking some time and inspecting. In case I forgot anything. A lot of times the heels are under the foot. I'll whiff on that and need to go back and wash it. But it looks like I've, I've been reasonably complete with this guy. So a little bit of Berserker Bloodshade. Hmm. He's in good shape. It's a well, uh, well designed model. The parts all make sense. Um, and he's not covering up too much of his stuff. I absolutely like, I got in there a little bit before his arms were on there, but for the most part, there's not a lot of threading you have to do. All right, let's go berserk. all the way on the edge and then drip a little too much and just dry the brush off get in there and soak it up and the start of a flesh eater's armor if anyone wants to dude I want to see everything that sounds dope Heck yeah I want to see it I'll just dude soak up my sins q-tip yeah get in there Definitely want to see that. Alrighty. That is nice and decently washed. And it I have found that it, it darkens things way more than you think it's gonna as it dries. This stuff definitely gets dark. Now we'll just bloop some. That's a little heavy. Easy there, buddy. Destroy all the texture all at once. Bloop some onto this tentacle. I find the Bugman's Glow and Berserker Bloodshade make for really nice tentacles that... Uh, I can never think I'd be talking this much about tentacles. Uh, they get really nice color to them, but they don't go out into, like, purple territory. They don't go out into, like... Um, not that there's anything wrong with it, but it doesn't eke into that, like, Disney octopus kind of color scheme. Which, like, I would absolutely do for Emperor's Children or whatever. But here, I'm trying to stay in a pretty tight palette. I'll have to clean that up a little bit later. But those are nicely washed. Which means, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm not going too fast, a little dab in there. Too, too sweet. Clean up that little spot that I didn't quite get. Yeah, you're looking good. Just make sure you get Boop. Yeah, he looks pretty cool. He does look pretty cool. I will move on to get that weapon. Do do do. Now this, um, I'm not going to be gentle with the typhus corrosion dryad bark where are you where are you buddy did I put you back why would I ever put you back did I drink all of my typhus corrosion I might have that's always an issue did I put it back on the desk I can't find my stuff good yeah there you are I always look a little greener I just pop over here Or tutorial. Ha ha ha. Popped over here in a bit. Oh my god, it looks. <laughs> oh, Gorilla Glue. Alright, I'm not gonna watch a whole. I'm not gonna do like some weird reaction video. I will check that out later. But that. <laughs> just what they were showing there. <laughs> the preview looked awesome. Uh, I can't get in here with a q tip. So I'm gonna use one of my designated green brushes. 
beat to all heck. Um, designated green brush. Oh yeah, those guys look dope. Those look really cool. Yeah, wash works really well on them. They look awesome. I was just going to ask, is that a librarian? I love that they're called librarians and they're just like, oh, I got a big axe and a massive. That looks really cool. It's my favorite time of night. Typhus corrosion time of night. This brush is so beat. All it needs to do though is just carry the unholy message of the traveler onto this. Yeah. Oh, gross. Get at it. This blade's going to be unclean. Yeah. They definitely get you to return the books. I do, the, the brief little spots that I've read about librarians, um, with some of the lore, some of the books, I've definitely enjoyed them. They're very interesting characters. Um, and I obviously have like a weird bone to pick with the Emperor and the fact that like, well, you know, shouldn't be doing psycho business unless it's like really helpful to the Emperor. And it's, uh comes up in several spots and obviously after the emperor is just sitting on the throne chilling everybody kind of does their own thing um there are several pretty cool pretty cool librarian characters out there and you know that and oh i just started uh i finished fulgrim and my next book that i started is i think there's like two there's two books about magnus it's like from the magnus side and from the the is it Lehman Russ? Um, that pair of books, I started that. And also very cool. I like Thousand Sons. Pretty cool. Interested to get into that. Have read almost nothing about them. Um, but I like them. That's all, everyone involved with Psycho stuff just is pretty rad. Unless they're in denial like Mortarian. They're like, I don't do any. I don't mess with the warp. Whatever, buddy. Whatever helps you sleep at night. Don't be in denial. Embrace it. Learn some control. Excellent. I dig it. I dig it. All right. Here is the point in the process where I go back with some delicious... Tesseract Glow. I feel like I've still not shaken this stuff up enough. The moments where it's felt amazingly bright have been awesome. But I feel like it's it's just too clumped up on the bottom of the pot. I need to order one of those shakers. Now I understand why people have them. You just hit a button. You know, if you go into a paint store and you mix paint... Do shake the daylights out of it. Whenever I've painted things, I was gonna say in real life, not that this isn't real life, but whenever I've like painted walls and stuff, like you sit there with a paint stir forever to get it to look right. Oh yeah, you know what? The edges of that bottle have not been touched by anything. That's a big oops. We gotta get that done. Yeah, this is the point where I find all the places that I just didn't do stuff. Just keep spinning the model and finding new stuff. That'll be easy enough. I can hit that with some snake bite leather, I think. That'll be all right. And a spot where I... Yeah, and I need to fix that dot that's on there. Can you even see that? Yeah, you can definitely see it. There's a big old spot of red there now. That's got to get all cleaned up. I do like the, the narrative of, you know, the librarian who like 
always this element of like, you don't want to learn too much, you can keep it under control. So right now, all these spots um, on the bottles that got Sarah from Sepia, I'm just dabbing them with a bit. I'm not trying to hit the whole thing again, just hitting them, dabbing them with a little bit of what was underneath the Sarah from Sepia. That'll come off as kind of like highlights a little bit. Get a little bit of texture in there, just using the same paint. Like, boop, down the side. Don't have to fill everything in. Boop, boop. And this thing up front, this injector pistolo, this might get eight layers of this stuff because I want it to really pop. I want it to stand out, but this stuff is not paint. <laughs> This is like crazy man wash. So I gotta be real careful with it because it, it is like so thin and radiological. You just have to keep adding it if you want to get like really good coverage. But at what cost? Because if it glops all over the place, you can't miss it. Tiny touches, tiny touches. A little bottle in there that I think I never got. Dupe. Yeah, you get a little bit of that. All right, so that's pretty wet, but I'm already starting to get some of the highlighting in, which is good. I can keep doing the dance, spinning the model, finding places where I didn't hit things. This is uh, Neolac Oxide for some of the blue. Once again, I'll just take a tiny dab of it and just not fill in just add a little touch to the blue bottles so I get a little bit of that light color back. Just in a couple little little dabs of spots. I think I think I'm already hitting I'm hitting ones that actually got Night haunt, whatever, but it looks cool and I dig it. So we're gonna keep doing it. There we go. Yeah, it gets a little bit of a glow up. There we go. We made a little dot. Boop, there. Just some things to catch the eye. This guy does need, I've gone over a, an amazing amount of little spots with wet paint. So this guy just needs a few minutes to breathe. What I can see, you can see as well, like definitely got that nice and shined up. I don't want to get too close to my finger. Boop, hit it. Um, a lot of spots on here that are looking nice, even though overall he's been darkened down. He's been taken down quite a big notch, but he's like, he's a happy looking Cute little guy. I might have to hit his eye lenses with red. I might have to. I don't want to. I'm just not sure that this Tesseract Glow is going to cut it. The Flesh Eaters like the Imperium's version of the Corn Berserkers, but, the, but for the Emperor, I like that. It's gene Seed Mutation. I do love the fact that the Emperor is like one of his greatest accomplishments is being a geneticist. I love the whole idea. Um, it really is a, like an awesome part of the whole narrative that like you've got these guys going. I can't remember what the widget is called, but like one of your space marines goes down. It's like, oh, let's go get the extract that for another day. That's really cool. I also find it interesting that in terms of like far future sci-fi, you know, another juggernaut IP is Dune and like that very heavily leans in on um, a bunch of genetic science as being like a cornerstone, um, which I find interesting because they're both old IPs, you know, 40K has been around for like 30 years. Um, but they all sort of saw that far future of like, well, genetic mutation, if we could finally wield it, um, would be a huge part of what makes sci-fi sci-fi.
when they're out in battle, they literally eat the flesh of their victims. Very metal. I like it. You know what, Dane? I feel like you're you're like this far away um, from where I'm at um, in terms of the creepy good stuff. You're like just one step. I just gotta pull you in. Um, that is extremely metal, and I love it. Absolutely love it. It's an endless well of like interesting lore out there. Yeah, I'm excited to get through the Magnus story. I've gotten to him through like oblique angles. Um, in other books, he's referred to like all the time. Like he's in Master of Mankind, and he shows up. He's like Father Magnus. You get that little spot. Um, the Outcast Dead. He obviously comes up in there. Uh, but hearing his actual story, I was very close to going with Thousand Sons as a as my first faction. I love the aesthetic. I love the fact that they're psyker heavy. But they just couldn't compare to my super creepy guys. Yeah, this guy's nice and dark. I like him. And uh, and, and it works very well because he's got so many bright, shiny, still relatively dark, but bright, shiny things on him. So I'm just looking for spots that I didn't hit, and I'm also just looking at it, seeing what parts are glistening and still a little bit wet. But we might be precariously, precariously close to this guy being done. I'll always go back and do like a couple tiny details here and there, but... But I feel good about him. Oh, my volume's low. I'm sorry. Um, you're like one step below me on the, the sort of like gory, creepy, creepy angle of the stuff that you do. Sorry, I was, I was just like mumbling into my own chest there. Um, I feel like I take things just one little step further than you do, which, which is pretty fun. Um, but yeah, let's see here. Now that I've mumbled to myself a ton, it needs your boy... Rise of Rust on that blade. It doesn't need a ton of it. It does need some. So we'll just get in there and just tiny. Wow, well, that's a lot. Um, a little dab of this stuff will do you. Yoink. Get the stuff off of the edges. Just can get in there and uh, make sure that that blade looks nice and unhealthy. Nice gentle dry brushing. I want to make sure that that edge gets hit because that'll really stand out. And I get this edge. It's not even the edge of it, it's the spine. But that edge of the spine, if you can get in there and get a few flicks in, it will look gnarly and rusty. Yeah. That's an unhappy looking weapon. Do do do. All right. This looks pretty close. I'll just check if there's any other spots. I did say I would get the edge of that bottle. So I will keep that promise. Do some dryad bark on that thing. Just get around it. Got a reasonably tiny brush. Check the end of it, feels good. A little dab of water. Little dabble do you. Yoink. This barely needs any paint. And we'll just get in there and yoink. Just get this cross part of the bottle done. There we go. There we go. Just to darken that up a bit. Yeah. yeah. That's true. That's true. I just haven't seen enough of your stuff. There we go. Yeah, 
had so much fun doing the gory stuff. I think I would have liked being a special effects person in film. Every time I think about like rusting materials and gore and stuff like that, I just love it. I love that people bring that to life in a way that just looks cool. I'm not sure that that work pays all that much, but it's got to be got to be fulfilling, especially because you get to like watch people react when they watch a film and see something absolutely grossing them out. It's like so visceral feeling your contribution to society grossing people out. I have the utmost respect for those folks. All right, that bottle's done. All right, I'm just going to quickly spin them around. You know what? Let's see what time it is. I feel like I still have a little bit of strength left in me. I could for once, which would be dashing, actually base this thing and actually be done with a model. Rather than saying, I'll go back and base it next time. Let me see if I can find my base club. And I think my basing bin is right next to me. Oh, 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 oh. This guy got some proper green fuzz instead of swamp tufts. Yeah, yeah. We can do this. Uh, if you want some completely awful and mind destroying lore, check out the Demon Kalaba if you can stomach it. Yeah, I could probably stomach it. There we go. Oh, look at this. And just, you know what, I'm going to put that on after the bassy stuff. After the glob. BRB, grab my, oh, my bucket is right here. It's still right here. And my tools are right here. I've started hiding stuff down there that I use pretty regularly. Yeah, we're going to go right in. We're going to finish a model, gang. I never do that. It's insane. Gonna base this guy up. Call him done. Let me remind you that when this guy is done, I am precariously close to having my full combat patrol. Which means I can book some time to go play the game with some folks. Still have to meet those folks. But I can start running up on my local game store and signing up for stuff. Big step. Big step. I think I got one more Plague Marine, but I can get that done pretty quick. Hey, what's up, Rick? Look, I'm, I'm actually basing something. I'm going to finish it. Excited. Against, against my own nature, I'm going to finish a model, including basing it. And this is only two sessions, which feels good. I'm, I'm building up confidence that I can crank through this stuff. Still keep a level of detail I'm proud of. Yeah, we are we are rolling. I feel pretty this paint looks <laughs> looks difficult. It wasn't too bad. I took my time. I took my time. Um little mistakes were made here and there, but most of this was just not rushing. Just no rushing. Everything a step at a time. But I, I appreciate the compliment. I like him. He's got a lot of neat colors on him, which is a little special for a Death Guard model. I'm using my clay or dental tools to just slop some of this stuff in there. And then this little fine end. Keep this stuff in the camera shot. I am a little delirious because I ran a fever today probably where my hidden strength comes from is that I'm actually not well. <laughs> so after this, I will probably cut out of here, but I'm going to drop a little shrubbery in here. I just got to get some of this underneath this heel. Yeah, so it looks gloppy. I'll actually boop, scrape a little bit on that heel, a little bit on that toe. I like to get a little bit of basing material on their feet so that it looks like they're Huffing it through things and not just perfectly pristine. 
So yeah, he's a, he's a pretty cool dude. He's got lots of shiny on him. He is a, for lack of a better term, science officer. As much as the character isn't all that likable in the Lords of Silence, the uh, Slurt is his name, the putrefier on, on their ship. A very annoying dude. I loved that character in the end when I reread the book. It's near the climax of it where they get in this huge battle as like a guy in a siege. He really like had, he comes into his own. Um, there's this great scene where this guy Garstag is this big Terminator Lord. Um, not really a people person either. Just like watching Slurt do his work to like break in to do this siege. He basically uses this big bat of chemicals. Um, rather than like knocking on the front door, this magical warp infested chemical stuff, and Garstag just like gives him a grunt of approval, and it's like in that line of work, that's as, that's as good as it gets. All right, this guy needs a shrubbery. I don't know if it'll actually stick in this wet stuff, but we're gonna find out. Give him a couple little shrubs. One, two, maybe a little guy too. Happy little shrub. Part of my Bob Ross ism. You guys can share that. I will eventually paint the edge of this. It wouldn't be me if there wasn't some other thing I was gonna do sometime and then never do and never catch up. Some night you'll be stuck with me doing all the all the things I said I was gonna do and never did. Um, but this guy's basically done. Um, looks good. He's based. Um, Got a lot of color on him. He's definitely going to stand out when I see him on the board. I won't lose him. Uh, I won't mistake him for something else. I won't mistake him for Typhus. I won't mistake him for Plague Marine. Um, but we did it. Uh, next up, sometime very soon, I don't know if it'll be tomorrow because I actually have to do a bunch of maintenance stuff for all this YouTube stuff. Uh, but I will start kit bashing the daylights out of some Chaos Lords. That's why I had those sprues up with all the Plague Marine stuff, um, it's because I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna set you aside somewhere safe, buddy, while I wrap. Uh, GG. Uh, this guy comes with a big old hammer. Not a huge fan of the hammer. I might keep it on one of these guys, but I feel like I want to swap it out. Um, so I'll probably swap that hammer out on one of these and give him like one of the big butcher knife cleaver things. There's a weird pointed axe. So I'll swap that out for something. I'm gonna keep the uh, Plasma pistol on all of them, because that's what they're all going to wield anyway. And then you got this skull up here. I can probably get... There's a couple little Nurgle symbols I can pop out of there. And he also gets this, like, sort of fur cloak thing. I don't think that's going to stay. Uh, there are some cloaks in there that I think I can use. Um, maybe one of them will keep it, because, man, the whole back of that model <laughs> has it already plastered on. I'm going to have to figure out what to do about that. Um, but... I'm going to grab some extra pieces, parts, and stuff, and got green stuff. Got to learn how to use that at some point. Um, and then the other big part is I'll just swap all the heads out. Just give them some proper Death Guard. Death Guard helmets sell a lot of the model. Obviously, the paint sells the rest. Um, but I'm not too worried about the, the detail work in there. That'll be fine. Uh, I can make that look Death Guardy. But there'll be some weapon swaps, some body swap stuff, some symbolic stuff. And I'll make some some horns and tentacles out of green stuff, which this is the only thing I've ever made out of green stuff. I just was like, how does this work? Um, this is just a byproduct of needing the magnets to rest in something um, in some of those hollowed out parts of guns. So I'm learning a lot. Got one of these guys too to paint. So fun stuff to come. But our, our next big mission will be my first attempt at kit bashing. Um, and I think that'll be that. Nurgle Space Marine Heroes. I do have some of that still lying around. And in fact, I believe this guy is a hero. And this guy is a hero. But for right now, they're just going to end up in my squads. Um, maybe that's not the right way to go, but... 
We'll see. I got more stuff to do. I like them just sort of as as dudes. I think I have one more. Don't remember where it is. Uh, but they're definitely cool models. But I I want to learn to kit bash. And this is a good project for it. So anywho, I'm a bounce. Thanks again for hanging out. Um, we'll see. If I get more sick, I may take a night or two off because I feel like absolute poop. Um, but this will be the next thing I do. Um, is three champs. Anyhow, it's been fun. Thanks a bunch. We'll see you soon. Uh, hit the like button because I appreciate it. And blah, 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 blah. I hate today and stuff like that. Uh, but we'll see you soon. Take care.